you're thinking about the strategy of your company or you're thinking about the strategy of your sales team or the strategy of your development roadmap, how do you have a playbook for what the future is? Because the future is a little bit uncertain right now. What the book is about fundamentally is the business model shift of high tech, what we call consumption economics. Because the way technology is being consumed in the future is different than the way it's been consumed in the past. And when business models shift, they have incredibly profound consequences. Much more important than any of the things happening on the surface are those business model shifts that happen below the surface. Because when customers start buying things in radically different ways, some companies are uniquely advantaged. If you're there early and you're there well, you're advantaged. If you're there late or you're there poorly, you are dramatically disadvantaged, right? So, you know, I, I call that the, the real Kodak moment. People have heard the phrase, the Kodak moment. Well, the Kodak moment was Kodak missing digital, right? That was a dramatic shift in the way people consume photography and Kodak was incredibly disadvantaged in that, right? So they were late to that shift. And if you think about the other end, you think about the, the shift in the music industry of going, we used to buy albums, right? Do people remember buying albums? I, I remember cassette tapes and you know, albums and used to buy all the songs at once. So the business model shift in the music industry was we're, never, we're not, no longer gonna buy albums, we're just gonna buy the songs we like on the albums. And who was obviously uniquely advantaged in that shift? Apple. But I want to start with one number, uh, which is a big number, $200 billion, right? And there's two versions of cloud computing that you could think about today. One, one version of cloud computing is a bright, shiny, happy cloud, uh, light rays shining through the clouds. Uh, it's a couple hundred extra billion dollars. These numbers are hard to comprehend until you put them into perspective of company sizes, right? This is an extra couple IBMs a year. This is, uh, you know, four extra Cisco's a year, maybe eight extra Telstra's a year uh, of, of demand that customers are placing on as a service business models. And the, the $200 billion comes from Forrester. That's their estimate of the growth in as a service businesses between 2010, when the world spent about $40 billion on those, those offers, to 2020, when the world is estimated to spend $240 billion on those offers. That's kind of our industry today, is we're defending the indefensible. We're defending a business model where the cards are stacked in favor of the vendor and they're not stacked in favor of the customer. And that's why this transition is underway and that's why this transition is gonna be so profound. This slide basically shows you the traditional business model of the high-tech industry, the one that we've all grown up and loved, the one that when I was running products at Symbol Technologies, uh, uh, which was a $2 billion business, all of our revenue was in this model, this, this CapEx model. So if you think about the lifetime value of a technology deployment, say a $2 million deal, obviously if your typical deal size is smaller, just divide these numbers by 10. But, uh, but often what would happen is we would get paid about a million dollars up front for the product. We'd get paid for the professional services up front. Oftentimes our share of that might be 20% or more of the product, so at a couple hundred thousand dollars. And usually we'd get paid the first year maintenance as well up front, usually another 20% of the product revenue, so another couple hundred thousand dollars. So right up front in this, in this traditional model, it was pretty good business for us, which is we had about 70% of the money, about a million four out of the lifetime value of a deal, of a $2 million deal, right up front. And we really only had one risk in return for that $1.4 million or that 70% of the lifetime value of the deal was we basically had to ha deliver a system that worked to spec. Whatever our sales professionals uh, positioned as the system being able to do, the system had to be able to do it, and in return we got that money. The challenge was the customer had two risks that they uniquely shared on their side of the ledger and that we didn't help with in the, in, the past, in the past model, which is why customers are moving away from it. And the two risks is, number one, adoption. And I don't just mean adoption, did the telepresence ever get turned on, did the WebEx ever get used? I mean, did the average user on the average day use the full feature set that would make them more productive in their job, right? So full adoption of the advanced capabilities of the solutions. 
all, all of the advanced capabilities of the of the phone uh, in a UC deployment or WebEx or telepresence in a video or, or, or web collaboration environment. So that's the first risk. And the customers uniquely bore that risk. The second risk that the customers uniquely bore was the risk of business value capture. Even if they got the adoption, even if they used all the advanced features of the telepresence system or the WebEx system or the UC system, uh, did they achieve the business case that they set out to achieve, right? And you can say, well, we really cared about that. We cared, we cared whether customers got adoption of our, of our technology and we cared whether, um, whether uh, they got business value out of, the, out of the adoption, but we were not actually paid to care, meaning we had all of the money up front and we had no real incentive over time to stay involved. So our sales professionals got their commission check and what we trained them to do is if you don't have more money to spend this quarter to drive by, what we call drive by selling is go find the next deal. Our services professionals are trained and incented to basically fix things that are broken. That's why I'm on a service contract. But if it's not broken, frankly, they're trained not to spend any time with customers and help them with adoption or business value capture. And our professional services people, our consultants, you can imagine, well, maybe they care. Maybe they care about adoption or business value capture. And the reality is all of their incentive systems force them to, to pursue billable work. And once the $200,000 worth of billable work is done, it's kind of like, here's your hat, what's your hurry? I'm on to the next billable engagement. So this was the, and this was great getting while the getting was good, as it were, right? If, if we could have stuck with this business model, if there were not other options in the market, customers you know, would have been stuck with this business model and we would have frankly been happy with that. The reality is with as a service, a new business model has been introduced to the world. And what this is causing is metaphorically the explosion of these blue dots. These blue dots are no longer big blue dots that we as enterprise sellers or commercial sellers can go and pursue. These are little dots of revenue that, that uh, cum cumulatively probably result in a deal size about the same size as the original $2 million deal. In fact, from the analysis we've done in an as a service world over the life cycle of a technology deployment, the total amount of revenue is not far off. Uh, but what it does is comes in much smaller, much smaller chunks. And you can say, well, customers could have done this in the past. If they wanted to spread their payments out over time, they could have leased the equipment or they could have leased the technology in the past. But this is not about spreading the, spreading the payments. This is about spreading the risk. This is about saying, I want you as my technology provider to own all three risks with me. The risk of, of uh, uh, that the system is up and available and works to spec the risk that my, my users fully adopt the advanced tape capabilities of the platform and the risk that I, re, I re, re, receive the, the business value that you committed to me when you, when you sold me the platform in the beginning. And if I don't get it, my, my solution as a, uh, as a customer is those little dots on the right-hand side of the slide. I'm not gonna pay you those little dots on the right-hand side of the slide. I'm gonna go to another vendor that can deliver. And if you happen to work for Siebel in the software industry, you saw Salesforce come in with the Model B, if you will, the OpEx model, uh, and eat your lunch. And obviously Siebel went away and became part of Oracle over time. So, so that's rule number one, if you will, is this shift in risk from the customer to the vendor and much more of a partnership, much more of a strategic partnership between vendor and customer in the future, we believe. So if you think about our sales model historically, we've had a sales model in, in high tech, which is new and renew. I want to sell a new customer, get, your, get my software into a customer, sell them the maintenance contract, att attach a service contract at the point of sale. And that, so that's one selling motion. And then I have a renew selling motion, which is whatever that service contract comes up for renewal, I want to renew those at really high margins and really high rates. That's how we all made our money. That's how I made my money when I was at Symbol, right? New and renew. Well, you can think about a new sales model for this world, which is what we call land and expand. Because really what you're trying to do is land in as many places, as many logos and as many deployments as you can with your offer, but it's really an option on revenue. The expand selling motion is where all of the value is. You better be putting data to work uh, in service to four specific activities that drive the growth machine of consumption economics business models. So what we did was we looked at 100 companies that were making the transition from CapEx to OpEx, and we basically tried to distill, well, what were the ones that were growing at above market rates doing really, really well? 
and you can see we're all pretty good at the top uh, right corner and the bottom left corner of this chart. We're all pretty good at the acquisition of new customers and the monetization of those customers, billing those customers, charging those customers, you know, renewing their, their maintenance contract, for example, in the CapEx world. So that's monetization. What we historically haven't been so good is at spinning all the gears. How do we get the engagement gear going that users are fully engaged with the technology, that they believe uh, the hype about what we sold the technology on, that they believe the technology will change their productivity within their organizations? And virality, so that's engagement in the bottom right corner. And virality in the top left corner is, are users talking to users? Are we getting the social, the enterprise social going? This is why Salesforce bought Chatter is it's the ability for end users inside an enterprise to talk to other end users and tell them about the new feature or new capability of the platform that maybe those users didn't know about and, and that could really drive their productivity. That creates new sales cycles for us. So, so getting all four of these gears going in a data-driven, analytics-centric way is gonna be a big part about how do you make margin and how do you make money in, the, in this future model.